Hmm. Good morning or good afternoon. This is Eric Lehman. I am the founder of the Game Changer Movement and welcome today to a very special uh, episode edition of the Game Changer Movement virtual living room. And, and the reason why it's so special is that today we, we celebrate and honor and pay our respects to the event that basically was the, the energy that that created the Game Changer movement, which is the um, the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School that took place at 9.30 a.m. this morning, three years ago, December 14th, 2012. And um, I, in some ways, I remember it as if it were yesterday and what it meant to, to let my kids know that, um, that there was a group of students that went to school in the morning and didn't come home in the afternoon and um and that there was a bunch of anger and a bunch of fear and a bunch of sadness and and there's there's nothing you know like and it's just like in the same breath it it was what it took to 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 awaken me to to my purpose. So so there's there's so much sadness and with that sadness there's so much room for for transformation and that's my belief as to why I'm here, you know, why I get to be here in the world and and who I get to be in the world. So before we launch into the conversation about transformation I just wanted to take a few deep breaths with all of you and um and spend some time in in silence and um in stillness so that we can you know honor the all the folks who who did send their kids to school that day and didn't get them home in the afternoon because that's that's just so sad and and it um I feel like it's time to to just honor that that moment in and of itself. Um, so why don't you just be silent with me? And um, yeah, um, anyone who wants to to join and have a seat is totally welcome. As as we exit our silence and and shift into transformation. So how about we take a minute and just honor the past and get ready for the future and the now. Hmm. <sighs> wow, this is probably one of those first blabs where we we show up just to to not talk and and maybe that's exactly what there is to do sometimes and so thank you all for for showing up today. Thank you, Antika, for 
for joining me on this journey. It's it's been an amazing year plus, you know, and um, I just you know I, I wanted to share a little bit about like what happened, you know, three years ago as this was was kind of coming through. And so like for for two months, literally, I was just walking around stunned and 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 dazed and didn't didn't really like know what to do with my sadness and my energy. And then then one day I just went into meditation and and I was so I was like really pure with my meditations before like and what I meant by pure is like I didn't want to take sadness in. Like I just wanted to clear all of my sadness, you know, in some some other way, but I didn't want to trust my meditation process or practice with with sadness. Um, and then at some point I just in, instead of, you know, holding it back, I just let it all in. And what showed up was such a beautiful image of just, you know, kids lining up carrying nothing but a violent video game in their hands and um, and wanting something better. And and that's when I, I made the first promise. And I said, like, you know, you know, after within a year, we'll have something, we'll have something rolling. And and the next day I saw an, saw an image of the AIDS quilt and I was like, OK, OK, so like we we can we can take these these violent video games that we collect from kids who want something so much better, who deserve something so much better. And we can we can cut them into pieces and transform them into art. And that's what we did. And and less than a year later, 11 months and a day after the, the shootings at Sandy Hook, we had our first event. And that was that was beautiful. And 60 people showed up to make one big heart. It was a broken heart. It was made out of a lot of different pieces. Um, but we pieced it back together, you know, and and so. Um, so that's, you know, like those are the memories that are going through my head right now. And. Uh, and so like for the past few anniversaries of this day, I've just been paying respects more silently and just letting it be what it's supposed to be like, you know, like honoring the the folks who personally sent their kids to school and didn't get them back that afternoon. Um, but now, you know, now it's time to like to come together on this third anniversary and and give those kids what they've been asking for, you know, and, and so like today I'm so happy and like we get to, we get to launch this contest that we just launched this morning. Uh, um, you know, a posts went to, I don't know, 113 people who had tremendous followings, you know, I mean, people, people posted on Twitter and people fo posted on Facebook and, um, and so hopefully some percentage of 470,000 people were touched by what we're about to do in the world. And, um, and what that is, is pretty amazing. And we're, we're about to create our first game changer ideation retreat, you know, which is our contribution, our way of saying, this is how we transform this energy. And it's, and it's real. And, and, and we now have, a date set we have a venue and and it's real and this is this is what we get to give these kids and show this is the way we get to show them how much we love them and how much we really care so um i can't talk too much so antica whatever <laughs> whatever is coming up for you you can you can be you well i, I amazingly amazing. don't have much I just want to hold this space and and be grateful that so much birth has come from an awareness has come from experiences like that 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 these kids these people the shooters themselves weren't lost in vain and that good and love is literally being birthed in community as well and we're not allow, let, letting them um, just fall short or not be remembered. And so you know, I really 
want to lean into and, and just explore with all of you joining us and in the chat, like how can we involve and reach more and more youth? Like what is the next steps to share this, um, this platform, this opportunity to create the new gaming system, to create a new game in community with, with you know, your buddies and your friends, and what would that game look like? Um, how how can we reach even more of them to have them join the contest that we launched today? That you can find out more about at gamechangermovement.com and get the next phase of this tribute going. So the lives that were lost are no longer lost, that they have a global movement. They have kids standing together in love. They have impacted um, the world in just a continuous, magnificent way. And they also get to create a really kick-ass game that I'm sure is going to rock. And who knows? Like, I've been talking to some kids about it being 3D with this little visor thing that they now have for iPhones and and how you can create this 3D platform. And, and oh, how cool would that be? And, and different worlds and different explorations and allowing the kids to be like, this is what I want outside. Like, like what does a villain without guns look like? Like how would you defeat that person? Um, I even had a conversation with a kid in at the pool the other day and was talking about, you know, well, there needs to be villains. It's like, how, how do you, how do you do that with, without there being a way to like kill them? And like, do you outsmart them? Do you have to overcreate them? Like is the villain your own ego? How can you, how can you do that? to also develop really great life skills unbeknownst to our children as they're playing these games that they're going to play anyway. I mean, screens are a part of our life, but how can we as parents then kind of steer it? So they're creating really fantastic life skills that are literally going to change the world into a better place and help them be more confident, well-rounded, secure children rather than fear-based which is what the gaming industry is teaching mm. right now. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think, you know, what, what we're learning and what, what has like that first year where we were just, you know, making art with kids of all ages, um, you know, we learned so much. And I remember this pure conversation I had with a six year old and, and she basically said like, why would someone play a violent video game anyway? And I was just like, wow, what a great question to ask. And like, you know, there was no real answer, you know, and I, I was just like, you know, and, and that's when it dawned on me, like the the best way to, to help kids not play violent video games or to help kids trade in violent video games in a way is is to have them not play them in the first place. And um, and that's that's the other evolution of of the energy of this movement is that we're now starting to work with youth who have made the choice or their parents helped make the choice with them. Um, and these youth specifically haven't played violent video games and they haven't allowed their hearts to be tarnished um, by, by these games. And, and, and we get to celebrate and, and work with those youth. And, um, and I, I feel like that's, um, that's a place of transformation and and agency, you know, and, and I feel like that's that's what this is really, really about is is just letting kids know how much they matter and like how much control they really do have of their own lives and their own light, you know, and, and I feel like that's the other true knowing that like kids are born with purpose embedded inside them. Like we've been we've been doing a lot in the world of embed codes, you know, over the past few days. And so like, you know, that, that word embedded is, is taking on so many different meanings. And, and so 
it's time to get out of our kids own way and um, and to to let let our kids know that they matter right now and there there's this quote that that keeps on coming up which is like kids don't care how much we know until they know how much we care <sighs> that's that's really what this phase is all about is that we want kids 8 to 18 to to literally take the space that we are holding for them with them and to create their own world because i i don't believe that you know that 6 year old who would ask you know why would kids play those kind of games anyway like if if she knew that there were other options available that could lift her up and let her shine the way she all was born to shine mm -hmm. She would never choose the violent video games in the first place. You know, it's right now what we're learning is 89% of the most popular games contain some aspect of violence. And so what we're here to do is to just shift that ratio and to let kids know that the new ratio is going to be created with and by them, you know, yeah. and, and that's what's, what's most exciting to me. Cause like, I feel like, you know, I, I read this book called um, The Power of Focus about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And it helped me identify that I'm a starter person. Like, I'm not a middle person and I'm not a closer. I mean, I'm a closer in other contexts, but but mostly I am a, um, I am a starter. So, like, I am here to, to help start this and then hand it over to the, to the, to the next generation and to create, you know, a panel of youth and parents who, you know, coexist and create together. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, um, there's, there's a lot still to be done. And, and in a way, like I'm, I know that my role is to be activation energy and, um, and, and, and then to hand it off, like willingly, you know, to a generation of youth that that has that is ready to take the baton and run with it. Yeah. So so that so we, yeah. we have some really awesome things that are gonna happen at this retreat where the kids are, you know, we're launching the contest today. We are honoring those who um who want to uh, just change their game. And we're also honoring the lives that were lost at Sandy Hook by doing something about violence and, and the violence that is taught. So I, um, you know, we have like a venue, Eric said, we yeah. have a venue. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. We have a grand prize winner where we're going to fly them out with the parent to the place, everything included. We also have five other winners where they're going to have a place to stay and be involved in the connection and everything. And then we have the whole event itself, which people can participate in. We need voters. We need people involved. And I think that we um, really, like, we're really excited about this, but we need the kids to step forward and, and say, yes, I want to be a part of this. I want, I have an idea. My friend has an idea. We all have an idea. And because we need them to vote, we need them to come and celebrate. We need them to have the idea and then create the idea as a team together. It's going to be a large group. We have room for 200 amazing people in this, in this venue to help us create this idea. So actually create it themselves. We're going to help them by facilitating it. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you know a youth that is into video games, one way or the other and has ideas and is creative that would like to be a part of a process, an important part of a process, you know, send them over to gamechangermovement.com. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, they can put in their submission. We'll look at it and we'll look like, ah, at and then we're going to 
build a community around it. And that's like, we really have this well planned out. We're ready to go. We're ready to serve. And we'd love to have a game out and in your kids' hands this time next year. Right. Literally this day next yeah. year, we want to be handing out a game and celebrating huge. So, um, yeah. Um, Eric, there's some comments over here on the side. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I feel like, um, you know, kids education, you know, is is a is a really um, hot topic, right? You know, so like, what, what is being taught in schools? And, um, you know, that that question can be fielded in so many different ways. You know, I mean, one of the the visioning documents that I've been sending out to people about what this the the magnitude of what we're up to is that we're learning that kids learn more in the gaming environment than they do at school right now, and it's it's a hard thing to say, but um, but there's a lot of truth there. And and I've I've witnessed kids playing violent video games, and what they currently know about guns and explosives would would really actually impress you from just a, a raw academic you know knowledge perspective the challenge is with 89 percent of the most popular games being you know somewhat violent um that educational platform is is kind of noisy it's it's noisy and corrupted in a way and and so what we're trying to do is um, is purify it, you know, not not from a you know a religious perspective or you know a censorship perspective, but celebrating the light that is shining from the kids before we we do whatever we do as humans to, to take that light away. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's why we're here. You know, and um, I mean, you know, you'll you'll learn more about me and Antica, you know, as you engage with us as people, but like what, what we experienced in our childhoods and, and for us to still shine the way we know how to shine is, is a miracle unto itself. And, and so, um, so with that, like, you know, we, we feel excited to actually reach a generation of people perhaps before they experience what we experienced as, as kids, um, and and to know that there are people holding the space for, for them to shine and who don't want to get in their way of of them taking their own agency. So, you know, I mean, it's you know we're gonna reach out to organizations like Big Brother Big Sister and the YMCA's and schools of the world, you know, and. Um, and I mean, I guess that's what what this call is all about is like, you know, what what can transformation look like? And while school is still in session, how do we transform what's being taught? And how do we how do we get these, you know, the school systems to recognize, you know, like, why are we dying diagnosing so many kids with ADD and ADHD, you know? what what would happen if we created a game that taught kids everything that they needed to know in school um and you know if you listen to seth godin he says he says we should reverse it you know he says we should we should do classwork at home and homework at school you know okay. and this way we we not we don't really get taught at school we get coached you know and and coaching is by far a much more efficient interpersonal way of making sure knowledge grounds into action. So, um, so I feel like that's a huge opportunity. And while the school buildings are still there, you know, mm -hmm. if we're gonna, in a way, risk our li the lives of our kids to send them to school, we need to send them to school for a major reason, you know, and um, and so there is an opportunity to transform what happens in in the school place, you know, as we learn what the game environment can do in the living room or in the bedroom, you know. So um, so I, I feel like this is a this is a movement and process, and you know we're we're gonna 
take things on as they they come our way you know i mean like having a venue having our first retreat scheduled is huge so april 1st through april 3rd in wappingers falls new york where alex gray and allison gray do amazing artwork um that's where our first retreat's going to be and um we're going to have an international uh vision you know we may actually have our third retreat in brussels so brussels belgium like who would have thought like a year ago a few months ago i would have just thought wow like if we have you know one in new york and one in california and maybe one in the you know center central time zone we're, we're doing a great thing and all of a sudden because we of all our there we go. There's, there's so many Alaskans because I'm like, I'm like Alaska, and they're all Alaska. We're gonna have to have them up here. What if like everybody that enters the contest is just Alaskan? That is my Alaskan pledge to all of you Alaskans listening to here right now. All of my friends, family, people who don't know me at all, I want you to enter so we can have one of the retreats up here. <laughs> saying if yeah, we go I mean, to belgium we can go to alaska <laughs> that, that's true that is true so i mean it's it is you know i mean i feel like this is a very um big day and wow there's a lot of activity on the side and i, I can't necessarily read um too much of it um you know while while trying to focus that on so true so anthony says great topic you have on it's a shame to see young kids relating to killing warfare and murder in the world through the lens of a video game we ex we agree exactly and eric and i both come from um violence in the home okay our childhood was filled with violence and childhoods there's two i guess but um they were filled with violence and what we're seeing now and what we're feeling now is even if the kid has a great family life, if they're spending the majority of their time in a violent world, they're having that same effect as if living in a war-torn house. And from being raised in violence, I feel like, uh, and the nonprofit Divinely You that I, I have, my, my part in this, is is here to help end and curb and re-establish relationship around violence and surviving violence and abuse. And I find that the more I find out about these video games and what's in them and what's around them, the more I realize it's really, really just recreating a violent household. Mm -hmm. And and also a whole bunch of other things are going on mentally with the kids. And that is, it's such a beautiful point, Anthony, that you said that because it's, it's true. And this is one of the biggest heart matters. I think that Eric and I have from a personal place is changing the dynamics of that and getting violence out of the home. And I just think this is brilliant that Divinely You and I get to do this through a gaming device. So not only the kids that are living in a violent environment can be saved from at least this piece of violence, but the kids that aren't living in a violent environment can be saved as well mm. from having to step into that violence. And, so, and you're right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt the flow, but it, it's just like, you know, it is, you know, there are so many different environments, you know, because because our eyes and hearts have already seen and felt what what real life violence is like. We just like it's sort of a no brainer, you know, um, that says, like, why would you put that into a game and then expose kids to what we now know is like 10,000 hours of gaming between ages, you know, birth and age 21. So if 89% of games contain, of the most popular games contain some aspect of violence, like why would you take a, an amazing household that is filled with nothing but love and then allow this energy to, uh, to, to kind of permeate what you're building, you know? So we actually want to help parents, you know, create a deeper bond with their kids. You know, I mean, 
I feel like, you know, so much of these video games are actually placeholders for our love, you know, and, and kids, you know, reach for the game. Why? Because they get a sense of significance and they get a sense of community because their friends are in these games. But what if their friends chose to play a different game? And and that's the whole point. Like in the in the sixties, there was this big they all question. Create the game, they'll all play it together. Right, and that's that's how buy-in gets ex- established. And you know, on the flip side, you know, in the sixties and seventies, they used to say like, "What if there was a war and nobody came?" You know, like this this is a choice-based movement. This is not a lobbying group. This is not trying to get to a senator or a congressperson. This is basically saying it is time to just make the choice for our own households. So that's where it's like a micro macro world, you know, like what we choose for our households, you know, radiates and permeates into our communities and environment. It's, and, and like, that's, that's how world peace gets to happen. It happens by individual, individuals choosing to feel peace now. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, sometimes that's more challenging, you know, than other times, but it, it's, it's really, it is time to, to, to shift this energy. I mean, for the first two anniversaries, I really laid low, you know, I mean, as much as this was bubbling up inside my heart and my soul, I, I wanted to, to give the space for healing, you know, but like what really blew me away, you know, just following Sandy Hook was the conversation went from like mass shooting to mental illness, to gun control, to like nothing like you know then gun control didn't happen and then you know whatever happened to healing a community you know Mm -hmm. and and so like that's the energy that we want to get back to is like we get to heal together um and create buy-in for this community that is going to replace the community that is currently vested in call of duty and grand theft auto and all these other forces and and i and i feel like you know I know we need to wrap up soon, but like there's there's one other point to make, which is like we're not calling out the industry. You know, we're basically we're not telling the industry that they did anything wrong because we made those decisions. We, you know, we bought those games and and we're going to buy different games, you know, so we're not telling the industry that they're no longer going to make money. We're telling the industry that it's time to make different games and we will still buy, you know, as consumers the games that are better and more nourishing for our kids. And, and one of the, the outcomes of this year, no matter what is going to be a new game changer rating system that will let the world know, you know, what we think, you know, and we is going to be defined by youth and parents. Um, uh, You know, what we think, you know, game changer games could and should be. And, and we're going to come up with a whole new criterion for, for, for what creates a positive gaming experience. Because we're not anti-game at all. Like, I have learned way too much about, about the, the, the learning power of games. So for me to just, you know, push them aside as, as evil, uh-uh. Like, they're powerful and they're, they're the most powerful modality that our current young generation uses to learn so it's incumbent on us to figure out how to get how to reach our kids where they are because that's that's the only way to create change if we try to create an adversarial relationship i mean you know antika you were in just say no in high school right you know and and we learn that just say no doesn't work without giving them something to exchange you know like that with Mm -hmm. so so that's yeah. You know, we are saying, say no, you know, but we're also saying shift your energy, you know, yeah. and, 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 let's know, and come and game. join yeah. us yeah. and create a new game and actually create it. Like we're giving them significance. And, and we're also, if you know of a um, company or a, a global problem, if you have an in with somebody that would like to sponsor the game changer movement, be a part of the game in some way, um, like have their logo on it or whatever, and um, has a problem that they would like to put out for the youth to change. We want to really incorporate these world problems that then a kid could solve that then they could get recognized for and build a coolness around solving global, global problems and, and 
just creating more significance and more community as we're through this this process. Mm. So I have to go. I have another show, but I want to thank you, Eric, for your heart for stepping forward three years ago and and listening to that call and meditation for putting it into action for continuously putting it first in your life and therefore putting the kids first and the memory of everything and every you know everything that happened and the teachers and the shooter and the kids that were lost three years ago today in Sandy Hook and um and and really not allowing um, any memory to die, but actually memories to be formed and people to be um, brought together on a continuous basis. And I love that it's just grown and grown each year and you keep stepping into a more um, profound and real and global view of, of making this happen. So thank you so much for doing that. And uh, with that, everybody, thank you for being on our Blab. We're here every Monday, and Eric can tell you all about that. Bye. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, before you go, Antika, like it's, it's, you know, it is, well, you've gone, but um, just to celebrate Antika, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's one thing to have a vision, and then it's another thing to have that vision heard and seen. Um, so, like... You know, we're all amazing leaders on this planet and and we have the opportunity to affect tremendous change just as just as one. Um, and the truth is, like, I would have done it alone and I don't want to like and and so, you know, I, I believe deeply enough in this vision that like I would show up to this game changer movement virtual living room all by myself, you know, once I learned about the technology. Um, but now that we've got counterparts in Alaska and in Brussels and in Washington, DC, and a lot of other people are, are showing up from places in this world that I didn't know I was going to be open to. And to, to be really honest, like I didn't, I didn't know that I was going to be so open to talking with folks in the military. I didn't know that I was going to be um, so open to the gaming community because when I when this first started, I said, "Let's get kids off the games. Let's get them out into nature, because that's where I heal." You know, I heal when I you know I showed up for theater arts or I showed up for for chorus or you know all the other groups that I was part of, um, and and then I realized that you know not all kids are built the way I am and wired the way I am. And so in order to really hold the space, you know, I've got three amazing kids and each of those kids need a different father out of me and they deserve a different father out of me because they're all different people. And so that's the same point is that, you know, when we invite kids to, to be master of their own domain, you know, um, and to create their next line of games. And with the technology that we have available, it's just gonna be fun. Like, I mean, I just can't wait until like we, we get to combine the internet of things with the gaming world, with, you know, geocaching, with whoever knows what else. Like, it's just like, there, there are so many more possibilities than, than when the last people, you know, were making games. So I'm just really excited because I'm a geek at heart. Like, and, and I feel like, you know, as, as much as I'm a spiritual person of transformation, I also want to see what's possible in the technology world. And I'm so looking forward to, to geeking out with a million youth. And that's the real long-term short term, that's the vision of the game changer movement is to create a community of at least 1 million youth. And of course their parents and caregivers um, to work alongside of us and to, to really bring this to another, an, another way of being. So, um, so thank you all for joining in. If anyone wants to uh, grab a seat, um, you're more than welcome. I mean, this is a very powerful day for me. So I, I appreciate all of you, 
you know, in holding the space for me to just be who I am. Um, and as, 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 um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And, and from here on in, uh, I, I, this is our way of honoring all the parents who, who don't have their kids to come home to right now. And, um, and so I, I know that it's a sacred job description that I get to hold. And, and I, and I, and I do that. Um, I live into that every day, knowing that in like in humble servitude of, of what it means to really hold the space for the next generation. And sometimes like, sometimes I just cry because like, when you get to live into a purpose like that, it's, uh, there's, there's no other feeling like it. So I thank you all for, for joining in and you are all so welcome to, to, to show up alongside, you know, Antika, me and our counterpart in Brussels, Carol, and, um, so many other people are coming on board. It's great. And so if you do have any contacts or any connections that would, lend a hand or show up in support of what we're up to. We know what we're doing on some levels and on other levels we're, we're still in beginner's mind on. So, um, so I humbly show up and, and ask for you all to, to show up in your light and to contribute your, your dream to this movement so that we can all be about way more than ourselves and, and that's what this has been since it was born into me. So thank you all. And I'll see you next week and perhaps earlier. Alrighty. Bye.